Hey, just doing a quick video on single reed bends to just demonstrate some of those sounds and where those are located. I have an A marine band that is not customized, but I did use bolts on the covers and open them up. Uh, the reed work consists of a little bit of gapping and you can see it's still nails. This is a, my car harmonica. And then I have a custom C here that um, definitely plays a lot better and has been optimized for things like overblows. Those single reed bends, you can find in the same spot as the half valve bends. So you're gonna bend, um, you're gonna blow bend on holes one through six, and then you can draw bend on seven through 10. And I'm unaware of any specific vocabulary associated with a valve bend and, and that technique other than being a sort of draw bend, I guess, like if you're playing on uh, draw seven. Uh, you can get the same effect with valves. I don't have a valve harmonica with me, but uh, what we're trying to do is emulate a valve bend without any real significant modification or tweaking of the harmonica. And the reason why you'd maybe do that is because of the inflection it gives you and the shading that it gives you on certain notes. It doesn't work as effective to hit notes to pitch. Like if I'm taking the seven draw on a harmonica and trying to bend it down uh, a semitone that it's not the most useful technique to do without valves. If you have a half valve harmonica that plays well and is set up right with the valves, that, that's a real stable note that you can hit. This is more of a shading thing and a, um, a, a way of adding vibrato or tremolo to a note and just adding some inflection and, and some emotion to some of the notes that you hit. Um, if I take that A, for example, I can go to the seven draw and I can, I can bend that. and I'm bending down. Now, that's not a real stable note even compared to the six overblow, which would give you the same pitch. But it's a cool thing to do for, for some emotional effect, some shading, as P.T. Gazelle would call it. Sorry, I got some crud in here. I still have some crud in here. Let's try a different one. We'll try eight draw, sorry. And if you're careful, you can play that pretty firmly and, and with some solid force without getting the overdraw to pop. So you're, tr you're, you're trying to hit a note that, that happens before the overdraw. Okay, you can hear that. This is not set up for overdraws. But that eight overdraw is pretty solid. It, it hasn't been embossed or anything like that to help get rid of squeal. That's a pretty solid overdraw by itself on eight. And you can hear when I play the example, since I'm not really attacking it right, you're going to hear the squeal. You'll hear the vibration. So that note, you can bend into it from, uh, from eight draw. You can start to bend down to the equivalent of that single reed bend before the reed pops. So uh, for the overdraw. And I'm playing that pretty much like I, I, I'm not having to be wimpy there. I'm, I'm able to play that as aggressively as I would play other notes up there, like the blow bends and things like that. So uh, the the eight draw, that's a really slick one because it gives you some of that same sound you can get like on the four draw. Okay, and that's the same note as you get on the seven overdraw. So you got two places you can find that and you don't have to sacrifice anything because you don't have any valves on there. You can get the overblow and the single reed bend. Um, I like to use the nine probably more than, well, no, I use the eight single reed bend a lot. I don't use the eight overdraw a lot. And then on nine, I would use that overdraw or I would use that single reed bend a, a fair amount. And you can hear 
technique wise, I'm not having to take anything off of that note and, and losing any sound or anything like that. Just like if I was hitting the overdrop. Okay. Um, it's not a very sophisticated harmonica. This is about as basic marine band as you can get. Had I not opened the covers, I would have had the same effect. So this isn't something that you need a super fancy harmonica to do, or you need to spend a lot of time setting up. You just need to find a place uh, where it's not gapped so tight it'll choke. And it's probably helpful to say that if the harmonica can overdraw, that your gaps will be tight enough to do that. And if you pay attention to how things are gapped, you'll realize like on 7, 8, 9, 10, that blow can be gapped pretty tight uh, without choking at all. And that 7, 8, 9, 10 draw is where you're going to have to pay the most attention to set that up. On 4, 5, and 6 on this one, I'm able to get some of that same shading on uh, approaching that almost like a blow bend. You hear how that 5 is popping to the overblock, overblow too soon. My technique's probably not very good there. So you can hear where that comes before the overblow. Same on 6. You're going to get that pitch, uh, that change, that shading before the overbend pops. Okay, you can hear that start to pop. So the big thing to remember is I'm showing you examples of where that note takes you as you bend it towards the overbend. That's obviously not how you'd play it in the context of a song because it would sound awful to have that sort of squealing. So you're going to... I haven't been using the 4, 5, 6 for the shading very much, but on the top octave I've definitely been... So that's an A, here's the C. This is set up so it's more tight, so it might even, it's, I wouldn't say it's easier to do the single read bend, but uh, they're less finicky. And you can hear I'm able to just bend it. I'm not having to really do a lot of um, a change to my technique or, or my attack, which is why it's an exciting thing to learn to do. You, you can use it in context and it's going to sound good. Okay, well, we'll see how low I can get that uh, compared to the, the overblow. So here's a six overblow. So you hear I got a huge range of of uh, pitches I can hit within that in one breath. I'm not going to have that same flexibility with the single reed bend on 7 draw. The floor of that's going to sit much higher in pitch than the 6 overblow. It's going to um, be sharper overall. It's about as low as I can go before the overdraw starts to pop. But just like a blow bend, well, well, let's take eight for example. Eight on the on the blow, I can obviously uh, bend the pitch for vibrato um, and play the blow bend. I can do that on the draw now with the single read bend, which is something most people don't explore or try to do. And I can also do that with the overdraw. So I have all sorts of flexibility. In the one hole now, I went from having traditionally what we would consider two notes. The This is a C harp, so I would have the, the D and E, the D on the draw, the E on the blow, and then I'd be able to uh, blow bend the E down a semitone for an, a new note, and that would be it. So I had three options. Well, now I have added a single reed bend, so now I have four pitches I can try to hit there or come close to or embellish on or shade or use however I want. And then I also have an overdraw, which, again, gives me another note that I can hit to pitch and another thing that I can manipulate for, um, for shading, for whatever I want to call that, emotional impact um, as part of riffs or, or what have you. And 
I tend to play a lot and pretty noty and pretty fast and on the high end of the harmonica. And that's a flexibility that, as a beginning player, I, I really, really yearn for. And it wasn't until I started messing with some of the PT Gazelle harps and that I had tried the SUB30 from Suzuki that I realized just how much uh, you, you could do up there and, and just how awesome that feels and how fun that is to play. But how was I going to do that without having the give and take of giving up overblows and overdraws to do some of the single read bends um, and, and things along those lines. So I guess initially what I try to do is play different positions that use those notes in different ways so I can play more blow bends and things like that. And uh, this has been a pretty cool compromise. The, the single read part really adds a very cool dimension. If you're trying to learn how to do that, I would, I would definitely su uh, suggest trying a half elved harmonica first. That made it really easy. As a matter of fact, where I kind of stumbled upon it was I'd been practicing on a half valved harmonica and then picked up a non valved harmonica and thought I had picked up a half valved harmonica. So I just tried to do the valve bend and then it was kind of there. And after just a few minutes, I was able to start hitting that consistently and to pit, not not to pitch, but with a full tone and, and a solid timbre um, versus what I was originally trying to do. So I, I think that's the cool part about it is that you don't have to drastically change your attack. Um, you can still be an aggressive player and play kind of loud and, and play kind of hard and still get those things. Hopefully that's a some help. Um, I would love to say I have a bunch of like super cool riffs that I can just rattle off with that technique, but it's still pretty new to me. And I tend to either start riffs on single read bends or end them on single read bends. I haven't worked too many riffs into using those as passing notes. So you can hear that one starting on the 10. That one before was uh, hovering around the nine. I was trying to, it's really hard for me to like play stuff using specific notes and pitches. As soon as I start thinking about it, it's really hard for me to rattle off anything that's cool. I almost have to just kind of do it in the moment. Okay, that one had, uh, was wailing a little bit on the nine. The eight's probably the most useful. You hear how I'm trying to, I want to bend it down to pitch like on that four, and I can't on the eight. I can add some of that inflection, but I can't really hit the pitch. I'd have to go to the overdraw. So like that instead. Let's see if I can make up one here. That'd be kind of a cool thing to go from the overdraw to the eight single read bend. I'll have to practice that one, but ho hopefully some of this makes some sense and at least it gives you some things to think about and consider and try out. So thanks for checking it out.